Hello. So, as Fedra said, I I'm a science educator. So usually when I tell people about my job, their first response is, oh, that sounds great. And then, but what is it? So I hope with this talk, I'm going to give you a few hints about what is science communication and what careers, op career options you might have and a few practical information on how to get there. So, So, science communication, it's a really a broad subject. As you do science communication, anytime, for example, when you talk about science, if you present in a conference, when you publish in a journal, it's really many opportunities. But for me, uh, science communication as a line of work, it's really when you go beyond just telling about a science fact, and you get into a discussion with your audience about science, what it is, and what roles it can play in our daily lives. So, who does that? A lot of professionals do that, but I only can speak for my job, so science educator. I'm going to present this in a few minutes, and then I'm going to let other professionals talk about their jobs. So. As Fedra said, I work for the NCCR Chemical Biology, where I run the outreach program. I invent or develop experiments where a lay audience or children can participate for themselves and meet real scientists. I think this is really very important, and if any of you is are interested in that, you should contact Fedra as soon as possible. So, I'm also the co-founder of a science education company, which is called Moulin et Ancel. So, I do basically the same stuff. We build and design tools with which people can experiment and learn about science from themselves. We also train teachers for, for, of primary schools, teachers, to be less frightened of doing hands-on uh, hands science teaching in their classrooms. What I really love the most about my job is that you can do a var variety of different jobs. First, you research a subject. Then, you do really hands-on work. You test your experiments, you build your tool, and then you get to test it with your audience, and you get immediate feedback on how it is. So, people often wonder how I got to be a science educator. Well, for me, it was not a chance encounter. I went into uh, science studies, but knowing that I didn't want to do research or teach in a formal setting. So, after a BSc in biology, I did a master's degree in science communication and where I could think about what it meant to do science communication and I could really find my spot. So, that's it about me. I'm going to let other people talk about their jobs. If it works. I studied biology and now I'm a curator and event manager in a scientific museum in Lausanne. So I'm in charge of the content of the exhibition um, and uh, I had for that uh, to translate the research of the scientists in something that can be shown in an exhibition. For example, a movie or an object or even what I prefer is an interactive device. Well, during my studies, I was very interested in uh, uh, transmitting and explaining science to young children. So I began to uh, participate to some uh, scientific events. And after that, I decided to continue my studies as a biologist and uh, I began a thesis. But I was really sad because I really miss uh, the science communication. 
So I decided to um, find a way to uh, practice these science communications. During my thesis, I spent like one hour per week uh, trying to uh, make guided tour or animation here in the museum. In my job, what I really like is to meet the scientists and to find a way to translate uh, their research in something that can be understood by all the people. Uh, as we create only thematic exhibition, every year I learn um, a lot about the topic. For example, we had exhibition about skin, about aging, consciousness. So everywhere I, I have to read a lot about this research and uh, it's really interesting. Keep in touch with the people who work in this field and uh, take all the opportunity to practice. So the next video was quite interesting to film because it's of a science journalist, so it was quite a, a challenge to interview a professional journalist, but we did it anyway. <laughs> I'm a science journalist and I work at the Swiss National Radio in a daily science broadcast. So every day, or almost every day, I make a report and then I present it on the radio. I was a student in Lausanne and I was passionate by astronomy. So I started to work in Chile, uh, looking for some extrasolar planets. And I figured out there that uh, astronomy today, research in astronomy today, was mainly computer science. So you lose totally the contact with the sky. You just have uh, computer screens in, in front of you making calculations, but you don't have this contact with galaxies, nebulas, and so on. Meanwhile, I was also working in a small observatory in the Alps, explaining to people stuff about the sky, about the stars, about the planets. And I really enjoyed doing that job. So I forgot astronomy, research in astronomy, and started with uh, communication in science. While I was working in the observatory, uh, some journalists from the radio came for a special astronomy evening. And uh, I talked in the radio and explained a bit the sky. And they said, oh, you should come every month to talk about the sky, the monthly sky. So I started like that at the radio. And after a few months, they told me, OK, you can talk also about other things than astronomy. So I started to talk about physics and chemistry and so on. And uh, step by step, I came to a full time job in, uh, at the radio. What is very nice in this job is that everything can be science. This concrete can be science, making fire can be science, flying in the sky can be science. And as a science journalist, you can try everything in life and test a lot of different things. And this is really enjoying for your life. It's not really the best time to become a journalist because a um, lot of medias are closing and so on. But the science journalists, not so many people are able to do that. Especially there are only a few journalists that have a scientific background and these people are really looked for in big medias. And I think if you were here at the whole conference, I think you might recognize the next interviewee. I'm a freelancer. I'm operating under the name of Sam Speak Science. I am teaching presentation skills to researchers. It takes the form of workshops that I do for master's students or PhD students or coaching with uh, senior postdocs or young professors who are doing job interviews or going to Brussels, for example, to get European funding. I have a PhD in neuroscience. I did two postdocs, 
And so after these 15 years of uh, doing research, I decided it was maybe time to do something else. In the meantime, I had acquired experience uh, with the TEDx Lausanne conference, coaching speakers, and working on the philosophy of sharing ideas, sharing knowledge. And I've also done 10 years of improvised comedy. I'm still performing improvised comedy. And so I combine all of these um, skills into doing communication of science. Open up, look around, and acquire as many skills as possible to prepare yourself for the future profession that you will have. And so if you are interested in science communication, do internships, get involved in programs around science communication. So I hope you learned a bit from these uh, few portraits of science communicators. And what I would like to emphasize is the advice they gave you. I think it's clear from everything that has been said that the most important is to get as much experience as you can. Uh, every university has an outreach program, has a communication department, and you, if you are interested in maybe pursuing science communication, you should absolutely get in touch with them and try to contribute in any way you can. This will also help you create a, a network, which is, as in any line of work, very, very, very important. And the last thing I would like to add is you have to know your strength. If you hate talking in public, you might not want to, I don't know, uh, be a, a radio journalist. And if you don't like writing, uh, well, don't write. Uh, I would also say that for me, because the, uh, the question of language has been raised earlier, I think it's very important for science communication if you, uh, if you can speak the language of the country you live in. If you want to really engage in a discussion with the locals, you have to speak their language. I think it's much better. So now for the last part, I'm going to show you some ugly slides, which are not here for you to read now, but uh, this way, when the presentations are uploaded on the website, you can get all the information you need. So these are two websites I would recommend if you ask yourself, ask yourself questions about pursuing or not an academic career. Uh, the second one is really especially great, I think. So I recommend you visit it. And I also search for you some training that might be available for you if you're interested in improving your communication skills or if you want to do some media training. And lastly, I want to talk to you about two events that could be of interest. The first is a huge conference that's called Excite. It's the conference of the network of science centers and museums in Europe. And uh, important information, the 2018 uh, edition will take place in Geneva. So if you're interested in science communication, this is definitely a place you should visit. And the second one is FameLab. Maybe you've heard of it. It's a science communication contest, a bit like uh, when you have to present your thesis in three minutes. And this could help you open a lot of doors if you're interested in science communication. And as I said, keep in touch with the communication offices of your university. So this was it, a quick guide to science communication. If you have more questions about it, or if you would like to get in touch with the, the people who were interviewed, you can write me. Uh, at my email address. Don't hesitate. Thank you. <laughs>